He lived at home for 210 days, with just a mobile phone and a computer. Turned a non-existent shop into London's number one internet restaurant. This is a real-life operation. A man called Uba. He used to work as a spy for a review site, spinning fake reviews for restaurants on the site. But over time, Uba discovered that the people looking for restaurants through the review site might not be interested in the food itself. Instead, it was the number of positive reviews. The more positive reviews, the higher the ranking of the restaurant, and the better the business. So, Uba suddenly came up with a crazy idea. He was going to create a fictitious restaurant that didn't exist. And then, through fake reviews to get it to the top of the review sites. Step 1, as requested by the review site, Mr. Roba bought a mobile phone to act as the restaurant's customer service line. Then he registered the restaurant's official website. It shows two of the restaurant's signature dishes. The starter is a honey-glazed shallot puff. The main course is a fried ham with egg. But you'll never guess how they make it. Uba bought a toilet sponge. He poured honey over it. Then he garnishes it with parsley. Taking a picture, an exquisite appetizer is presented. The main course is even more outrageous. Booba places the heel on a plate. Spread the fried egg. Sprinkle with seasoning. Find the right angle. Take a picture and upload it to the website. And that's it. Two sets of dishes worthy of a Michelin restaurant to create a gimmick and to prevent any mishaps. Uba has also given the restaurant four rules. Step 1, eat outside. A rustic feel. Step 2, weird. The restaurant does not offer an a la carte service. Instead, we order according to the mood. Lust, empathetic, comfort, love, happy, etc. Step 3, homely. After all, the room he live in is too small. The fourth step is the most important, appointment only. The restaurant only accepts reservations by phone, and the address is not available to the public. Setting the tone. The next step is to submit your application to the review website. A call from the reviewer. Oba was able to get by with a few words. The restaurant is officially approved. It's up and running on the review site. But at this point it was at the bottom of the list. 18,000th in London. Il omelette. Secret toilet bowl cleaner. Such a hardcore dish. From London number one internet restaurant. What's even more outrageous is that this restaurant doesn't exist. It's just a fake listing on a website. The restaurant had just gone live on the site. It was still at the bottom of the rankings. In order to get up the rankings quickly, Uba, the marketing geek, started contacting his friends to give the restaurant a fake five-star review to create authenticity. He asked that in the reviews, it can't just be that the restaurant is the best. It must reflect the details of the service and the fact that the restaurant is so rare. For example, it was a memorable trip. The owner prepared blankets for us after the sun went down. This restaurant is really worth the wait. I had to call for a week to get a reservation. This place is so hot. With more and more five-star reviews, a month later, with only these fake reviews, the restaurant finally received its first call from a customer. But Uba, who hadn't even gotten up yet, turned the customer away on the grounds that it was fully booked. After all, at this point, the restaurant had only risen to 10,000 in the rankings. This was clearly not Uba's goal. But where there's a first, there's a second. False reviews grow. And naturally the calls for reservations came pouring in. Some even wanted reservations for Christmas a few months later. But Uba still turned them all down on the grounds that they were fully booked and there were no places available. And so three months later, the fake restaurant, which had never had a single customer, managed to rise from 10,000 to 1,456 on the review site thanks to its hunger marketing. As it rose up the rankings, the restaurant also became a hit. Uba even received calls from various PR agencies. They wanted to use his brand to open the restaurant all over the world. Five months later, by now the restaurant had risen to 91st place in the rankings. Uba's phone is now ringing off the hook every day. Executives from famous companies, internet superstars, celebrities from all walks of life wanting to dine at this mystery restaurant. There are even a lot of calls from job seekers. They were eager to apply for jobs at the restaurant that didn't exist. And so it went on for another month. Almost frantically, Uba, the non-existent The Shed at Dulwich, finally out of the 18,000 restaurants in London. The Shed at Dulwich has finally risen to the top of the restaurant charts. It even scored higher than some of the top Michelin restaurants. Uba saw that he had succeeded in proving his idea to keep the crowds at bay and not to disappoint anyone. He decided to get ready for his first customers. Uba started by picking two order from the reservation list, telling them that there would be a place in five days, inviting them to come and try it for free. To keep up with the hype, Uba began to clean up the courtyard. Then he asked his friends to play chef and waiter. But the chef didn't know how to cook. But that's okay, because all the dishes are all very low cost. 
Instant food, simply microwaved and ready to go. To drown out the ding of the microwave, he had a DJ friend play music all night. Everything was ready to go. The opening was imminent. And to prevent any mishaps, Uba greets the customers himself from a distance and then put a blindfold on them. But the customers weren't offended. Instead, they felt excited. Through the squalid shanty towns and into the courtyard, the guests take off their blindfolds and sit down. Little do they know that apart from them, all the rest of the customers are actors hired by Uba. They keep praising the food to create the atmosphere. The waiters start serving the customers. It was all cheap fast food. But the customers didn't notice the difference. When the meal was finished, all of them gave five-star reviews. They even said they would recommend it to more people. The farce that lasted for seven months finally came to an end. After all this, Uba understood. Since people only believe what they see, they only listen to what they want to hear. He decided to do another experiment. Only this time, the challenge was even crazier. How to make a pair of jeans from a stall to the Paris Fashion Week and become a top fashion brand. This is a real-life social experiment. His name is Uba. Is a marketing genius. A few months ago, he just turned a non-existent restaurant into London's number one internet restaurant. Now he's in Paris. He's going to pick a random pair of jeans from a stall and turn it into an international brand. The jeans are called Giorgio Piviani, but Oba searched the internet and found very little information about it. So he disguised himself as Giorgio Piviani. The plan begins. Step 1. Register for the official website. Put up photoshopped photos on the homepage. Step 2. Print high-end business cards. Cards. Step 3, arrive in Paris for the fashion week. But he didn't have an invitation from the organizing committee. So Oba disguised himself as a hipster and infiltrated a local fashion party. Here he gets the exact address. He arrives at the door. He handed his card directly to the organizing committee. He used his words to make himself known. He presented himself as a famous designer for an international brand. Just five minutes later, Uba received his admission ticket from the organizing committee. He entered the venue. Uba started handing out business cards to guests, introducing his brand. He calmly took pictures with the fashionable celebrities, and so he became the fashion favorite of the evening. After the event, he was invited to a top fashion party. It was here that he met more of the biggest names in fashion, top models and famous designers. He also managed to persuade an Italian supermodel to try on his miscellaneous jeans and to top it all off. A well-known retailer from Milan. She saw the jeans and was so impressed. She was going to pay a lot of money to buy the Milan distributorship. And then, models and internet celebrities were attracted to the jeans. They went live to try them on. The number of people in the studio rose to 700,000. Countless fans wanted to buy the jeans immediately. By the third day, Uba brought in a few more models. He took a pair of scissors and cut into the clothes. Then he hired a photographer to take a fashion photo shoot and posted it online. The result was another internet sensation. From then on, the internet was full of bloggers. Fashion celebrities are clamoring to have their pictures taken with Uba. Fashion shows have been sending invitations. Uba was invited to attend. In less than 72 hours, Uba managed to turn these miscellaneous jeans into an international brand. But the real owner of the brand, Adam, didn't even know it yet. He was still selling cheap jeans in a small shop of a few square meters. Little did he know that his copycat brand was now being seen all over Paris Fashion Week. He didn't know what was going on until Uba came to visit him in person afterwards. This is the story of Uba Butler, the marketing genius. In a society where there is an explosion of information, our upbringing, our experiences and careers determine who we will be. It also subtly influences our judgment. Right and wrong can often be hijacked by emotion. People tend to believe only what they want to believe and lose sight of what the truth really is. If you like it, please like and follow me.